So we need to come out of this terrified, uptight. Because like, when did you ever fall in love? Have you ever heard anybody say, have you met Brian? Oh, he's so fucking appropriate. Oh, he turns me on. <laughs> it's not a turn on. The people that turn us on are the people who go to the edge, who are a bit more, you know, juicy, visible. The people who turn us on are the ones who are visible, not hiding. And they give us permission to be visible too. And that's why I want us all to leave this workshop at the end of tomorrow, all of us as walking permission slips for everyone to lighten up around all this hiding and pretending and this dishonest way that we all deal with each other. How are you? Fine. How are the kids? Fine. See you Sunday. Fine. Skipping along the surface with these unsatisfying, disconnected relationships and always hungering for a deeper connection. Well, we can have a deeper connection, but we've got to be the ones that are open to it. No one's going to come and give us a deeper connection, pop it into our safe little appropriate box. We have to dare to be visible. Dare to be a bit more visible. When somebody starts talking about their child being a drug addict, which may have been a taboo in that circle, suddenly somebody else has now permission to say, oh yeah, my kid too had problems. Suddenly we can all be real with each other. Who's going to be the first one to bear their soul a little bit more and say, actually, a lot of mornings I wake up with a real pressure on my chest of sort of anxiety. How many people here wake up quite often with a pressure on their chest of sort of feeling anxiety or something's not quite right? Half of us. How many people in your life know that? Nearly no one. How can we be there for each other and share what the pressure on our chest when we wake up in the morning is? We think we're the only nutter. That no one else is like this, but everyone else is like this in different ways. So when I look at you all, it makes me really pleased because I know that you're fucking crazy <laughs> and hiding it. <laughs> Doesn't it feel a little bit of relief? I'm crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine if the people at your job or in your family could hear the internal dialogue that goes on in your head on a daily basis? Can you imagine if they could hear? It would be over. You'd all be fired probably. Your Reiki practice would be finished. No more Reiki clients for you. <laughs> so we're constantly in this self-editing, suppressing different parts of ourselves place. Suppressing our rage, suppressing our neediness, suppressing our greediness, suppressing our filthiness. Whatever wasn't welcome in our house, we are suppressing, mostly unconsciously. And it's all different. It's not only the darker things that we are suppressing. It's not just our greed and our neediness and our rage. If we grew up in a house, which many of us did, where all of us were born with a natural extrovert, inborn entertainer in us. We've all got everything in us. An abuser, an entertainer, we've all got everything. Many of us grew up in houses where your natural extrovert entertainer was not supported. You grew up in a house where it's like, stop showing off. You know, stop quieting down. Quiet, it's too loud. It's too much. It's too this. It's too that. And you only need to have, in front of your pals from school, had your elder sibling or your mother say, stop showing off in front of your friends. It's a really mean thing to say, isn't it? It's so fucking disempowering. Stop showing off in front of your friends. You feel that as an impact. A couple of those, and your natural inborn entertainer is shut down for life. The shame that you were showing off, that you were doing something awful. So now when you want to be extrovert and entertainer, there's that shame in it now. And that gets repeated and backed up throughout your childhood or you went to a school that was very uptight or whatever. Everyone here is a natural entertainer. Maybe half or more of you wouldn't feel comfortable getting up and doing the can-can for all of us. So in that family or in that person, their natural entertainer is shut down. In another family you grow up and you're not allowed to be shy. It's like, stand up! Speak in front of the group. We're not shy in this family. Speak out. Speak out so everyone can hear you. It's like, oh God, a shy person is like, has now no permission for their shyness. It's not just the anger and the greed and the perversions that get suppressed. It's our, 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 our joys, our, our gifts get suppressed. You're not good at singing. Okay, suppressed. 
And it was backed up all the way through school. You know, oh, you're so uncool. Oh, am I? All right, never wear bright colours ever again. That's what happens. Never dance publicly ever again. Never sing. We shut down all the bits people told us they didn't like. Debbie Ford, who wrote this great book called Dark Side of the Light Chasers. Dark Side of the Light Chasers. Great book. In fact, when I read it, I was like, have you been listening to my workshops? Also, when I went and saw Inside Out, have any of you seen the movie Inside Out yet, the Pixar film? That's what we're doing this weekend, essentially. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Wow, what a great film, what a great message. What an amazing thing that that gets into the mainstream. Incredible. So Debbie Ford, back a little digression there, who wrote Dark Side of the Light Chasers. She says, when we're born, we are each of us a castle with a thousand rooms. And every room has a gift in it for us. But as soon as we're born, our parents go, darling, we don't use these rooms over here so much. So they get kind of boarded up. And then different friends, different people walk through our castle throughout our childhood and they tell us which rooms they like more than the other rooms. And so more and more of those rooms fall into disuse until you arrive as an adult thinking you're a two-bedroom flat in Neesden that needs some work. We are here to look into some of those rooms and see that we've actually thrown a lot of babies out with the bathwater. There are some, rule, some rooms that, yes, probably should stay closed, <laughs> apart from some very, very um, occasional openings. But there are many, many, many rooms full of skills, full of treasure, full of potential for intimacy that we've forgotten about. And we're going to take a little tour around that this weekend. Mm. The challenge that we have is that even if we've done a really great job of manicuring ourselves into this lovely version that seems to go down well with everyone and no one's noticed what a freak I am, even if we've done a very, I love seeing you grin every single time, I've got my eye on you, even if we've done a great job of suppressing and editing and, and, and getting ourselves down to this appropriate shape. Life doesn't give a shit. Whatever parts of ourselves we've cut away, life is constantly trying to bring back. Have you noticed that? Whatever, it's like a, whatever, the further we suppress it, the more it wants to leak out, in fact. That's why, you know, Tourette's is like the ultimate version of that. And I'm, I, I'm glad to have it. I have a small version of Tourette's, which I'm I'm glad I have. I think, God, if I didn't, couldn't say some of those awful things, I don't know what they would do inside me. Um, I once saw this lecture by Deepak Chopra where he talks about the human body as an exquisite pharmacy. This is an exquisite pharmacy. It's great how he says it. Um, by the way, that's another stupid limitation and edit in our lives. Whoever said that talking in the different, you know, having fun with the different accents of the world was racist. When did that come in? That's so stupid. I love the, di the music of the different accents. I love the Scottish accents, the Welsh accents, all the regional accents of England alone are brilliant, let alone the Indian accents and the, and the you know, African accents. And I love all the different accents and I love speaking in them and they're fun. And they're th at some point, somebody in the 80s decided that it meant you were racist if you did that. So I would just like us to collectively, and everybody watching this in the 50 different countries, we're now going to remove that rule. Can we just take a vote on that? Yes? <laughs> Bring it on. I don't think somebody's racist when they're talking in a silly accent. I think someone's racist when they're abusing someone of a different race. Anyway, Deepak Chopra the famous Cuban acrobat, he would say that the body is an incredible, exquisite pharmacy. I don't think he does that when he does it. Maybe that is a bit racist. <laughs> Let's take it a bit far. Anyway, an exquisite pharmacy that is constantly self-mending itself. It, this is the most amazing self-mending thing we know of. It's like you scratch the surface of the skin. Like I have a lot of daughters, so I'm like covered in a lot of scratches. It's incredible how it just mends itself over, like a Harry Potter thing. We just take it for granted. You get a great scratch, it just mends it over. You break a bone, it knits itself. Your body and my body is constantly, 24 hours a day, scanning for bacteria and 
viruses and stuff, and then making drugs. It's making its own drugs, secreting things, mixing them together, administering them in the perfect quantities to us, day and night, while we're here, while we're playing squash, wherever we are, it's constantly mending itself. It's amazing. Well, my news for you is that it's not only mending itself as a physical body. It's also hardwired to mend everything. So everything we have snipped off, everything we've edited off and suppressed and shut away, this body and this life is on a mission to keep unediting us back to wholeness. And the more we suppress it, like the more you push a beach ball down under the water, the more violently it springs up. So the more we're suppressing something, the more life is trying to bang down the door to get to us. Have you noticed that? The bits you're trying to push away, life is smashing down the door. You can't escape from it. All the things that you don't see are welcome in you, life is going to keep sending you to get you to unedit yourself back. That's what I believe is the genius of life. And whether you do or you don't have spiritual beliefs, I'd like you just for this weekend to open to the idea that life with a big L might be trying to help us. Life with a big L might be hardwired to unedit us back to the groovy, unapologetic, juicy, powerful, creative version we arrived as. <laughs> <laughs>